Um, and then uh, like the, the Gigafactory. So, so we're thinking about like, okay, how do we go from Model S um, at you know twenty thousand units a year, um, which, which is now sort of approximately fifty thousand units a year, or, or with the Model X, you know, almost a hundred thousand units a year. Um, but we wanted to execute the the, the, you know, the goal from the beginning, which was to make a, a high volume, affordable electric car. And if you just do the basic math and say, okay, how many batteries do you need uh, to do that? And if you have half a million cars a year and an average uh, kilowatt hour level of 70, then you need 35 gigawatt hours. And that's just, that's just, for, that's just for the car. And then if you do, as we later talked about, um, stationary storage, then you need additional capacity on top of that. Um, so now this would be, this is quite challenging because the, to the total worldwide production of lithium ion batteries of all kinds for phones, laptops, you know, uh, pow you know power drills, uh, cars, everything was only 30 gigawatt hours. So like, hmm, okay, this math does not work. Um, Obviously, we are not going to get every factory on Earth to just do our stuff. Uh, and even if they did, there still wouldn't be enough. So it's like, we've got to build a factory here because like, nobody's going to... Otherwise, if we don't build it, uh, we don't know how to solve this, this issue. Yeah, and it, it was also a chance to uh, reinvent the way that batteries had been built. Mm -hmm. um, you know, up until this point, basically all lithium-ion factories were more or less run by consumer electronics companies. They were built in consumer electronics volumes and sort of with that, those methods. And you know, we sort of had this idea that we could vertically integrate this much more and get a lot of inefficiency out of that process. You know, moving the upstream you know, materials and, and sort of raw material processing very close to where the cells were made and then moving the battery pack and module production right next to where the cells were made on the other side. So doing all that, we have a pathway to reduce the cost of the battery way faster than anyone expected. And ultimately, that's what makes the high volume of cars you know, accessible at a price point that people can actually afford. Yeah, and it's worth noting, like, uh, sometimes people think like, Tesla is just using commodity um, um, lith you know, cylindrical cells meant for laptops. But, but this is actually not true. The, the, the standard laptop cell d does not work well for an electric car. It has the same external form factor, but the internals are quite different from what would be used in, um, in a laptop. It just happens to look the same from the outside. Um, and and um, actually, in doing the Gigafactory, we wanted to reconsider even the external dimensions um, and um, did a first principles analysis of what would be most optimal and concluded that um, we needed to go to from an 18 millimeter diameter to a 20 millimeter diameter and from a 60, 65 millimeter height to a 70 millimeter height. Um, and, um, <laughs> And so that's you know the, the equipment that's really that that that's being installed at the Gigafactory, and that's that's the cell form factor we think is probably optimal, you know. Um, and, um, and and this is in establishing the Gigafactory. This is where we first really started to think hard about the importance of building the machine that makes the machine. Um, so how do we rethink cell production, module battery module production, battery pack production, um, and production in general um, on a physics first principles basis to achieve the best possible outcome. Um, because we had to do that out of necessity for, for, the, for the Gigafactory. Um, and then, as I'll talk about later, um, we're going to do that for the whole car. Um, and um, I should say, like, the, the initial expectations of the Gigafactory were about 35 gigawatt hours at the cell level and 50 gigawatt hours at the pack level. So we thought we would um, internally produce uh, the, um, uh, most of the cells, but still draw upon uh, factories in other parts of the world uh, to make up for the rest of the cell volume so we could get to a 50 gigawatt hour level at, at the module and pack, for modules and packs. And that, that incremental, as I said, to get to 500,000 cars a year, you only need 35 gigawatt hours, but the other 15 gigawatt hours was meant for a stationary storage. Um, and um, now, as we've gotten deeper and deeper into the Gigafactory design, oops, sorry, let me go back here. Let's release the Titan. If it goes back. <laughs> oh, sorry. 
Uh, so the, as we've gotten more and more into the gig factory design, again, sort of like my favorite thing is to think about things from a physics first principle standpoint, because I think that's sort of the, the best way to think critically about um, particularly a technical subject. Um, it, we've actually found that we can, I mean, theoretically in the same form factor as the gigafactory. Um, so I'm not saying that we will do three times, um, but within that form factor, the, you know, w within what you see there, which is sort of, I try to be slightly romantic about it, which is like, it's designed sort of like a diamond and, and aligned with true north. Um, and, um, but within that form factor, um, in, in principle, we could actually do triple the volume that we initially expected. Um, yeah. So, um, yeah, and we're going to have the Gigafactory party, uh, opening party. Well, it's actually, the Gigafactory has been open for a while, but the party will um, you know, be happening uh, in July. Um, like I said, we, you know, we throw a good party, so.